I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNP certification video practice exam focusing on the BSCI exam and in particular BGP. Now if you're in the middle of your BGP studies or you've completed that for the BSCI exam, you know that no 10 question practice exam is going to cover every detail of BGP. It's just not possible. So what we're focusing on here are the fundamentals. We'll talk about the attributes a bit and in other videos we'll get into more detail about some of the other BGP features. But let's start off this 10 question practice exam and as always we've got a 10 minute time limit here so we're going to go through the questions pretty quickly. Feel free to pause it and come up with an answer because some of the BGP questions here are a bit involved. This one though is not involved, it's short answer. What port number does BGP use to establish adjacencies? Gotta know that one because if we put an ACL in and all of a sudden our adjacencies for BGP come down we better know what port number needs to be allowed or what port that is. So what port number does BGP use to establish adjacencies? Moving on to question two, take a look at these four statements and tell me which ones are true. And we're going to move on to question three here in just a moment. Let's take a look at question three. Assuming that I am just beginning an adjacency or I'm trying to make an adjacency form between two routers. I put this neighbor command in and I got the dreaded incomplete command message. What required parameter is missing from this command? What required value is missing? Let's go on to question four, the BGP attributes. Boy, they all do different things. We gotta know what they do. And we also should probably know which ones are mandatory and which ones are discretionary. From this list, identify the well-known mandatory BGP attributes. And then from this list, identify the well-known discretionary BGP attributes. Bit of an essay question here for number six. Give the three possible values for the BGP origin code and just briefly describe the meaning of each. I'm talking one line, doesn't have to be paragraphs uh, in case you're writing this out. Uh, just give me the three values and describe the meaning of each. Question seven relates to question six. Of those BGP values, the origin codes that is, list them in the order from most preferred to least preferred. And speaking of most preferred, in the BGP best path selection process, what attribute is considered first on a non-Cisco router? What attribute is considered first on a non-Cisco router? Question nine, the BGP attribute weight. Which one of these four statements is true, or which ones? There may be more than one. So just take a look at that, and we're gonna to move to question 10 here in a moment. What is a soft reset in BGP? And why would we perform such a reset? So 10 solid BGP questions there, testing your BGP fundamental knowledge. And before we hit the answers, I invite you out to my tutorials page. I've got plenty more information for you there on BGP and other CCNP topics. You can come out to Bryant, the bryantadvantage.com slash tutorials.htm or just search on CCNP tutorials in Google. We'll be on the first page there, usually in the top five matches. So let's take a look at the answers to our questions here. First off, BGP uses TCP port 179 to create and maintain its, its adjacencies. In this set of questions, A and D are correct. BGP and EIGRP both use autonomous systems to group routers logically. There is no requirement for BGP routers to be directly connected in order to become neighbors. However, for them to become neighbors in the first place, you've got to specify the potential neighbor's AS, autonomous system number, with remote-AS after this command. Or rather, I should say here at the end of neighbor. You would need to type remote-AS and then the AS number. Let's take a look at number four. The well-known mandatory BGP attributes are AS path, origin, and next hop. So A, D, and E is what we were looking for there. 
Now as far as the well-known discretionary BGP attributes, uh, that's local preference, local pref, and atomic aggregate. Let's move on to the origin code, and I mentioned three possibilities. You could have a lowercase i, a lowercase e, or a question mark. And let me type those out for you. I know that's going to be, there we go. You could have a lowercase i, a lowercase e, or a question mark. Let's turn that back to an i. So we can have one of those three meaning, three marks. Lowercase i, lowercase e, or a question mark. The letter i indicates that the path originated from an IGP and was originated with the network command. An e indicates that the route originated from an exterior gateway protocol. And then finally, the origin code of a question mark, it means the origin is not clear. And generally what that means is that it was learned via redistribution. And with question 7, from mo most preferred to least preferred, uh, IGP, EGP, and then incomplete. So it's actually the order I put them on the whiteboard there. Let's go to question 8 in the uh, BGP best path selection process. Now, it would be wait if this was a Cisco router. But wait is a Cisco proprietary BGP attribute. The first attribute considered on non-Cisco routers is actually local preference. The highest is preferred, actually. From this list, A, B, and C are true. Weight is the first attribute considered in the best path selection process on a Cisco router. It is Cisco proprietary, and it is locally significant only. It is not advertised to other routers. And then finally, the soft reset. BGP sometimes requires a session or an adjacency to be reset in order for changes to take place. The problem is that can require tearing down the existing BGP connection unless you use a soft reset and it actually resets that session without tearing the adjacency down. Hope you enjoyed this BGP practice exam. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you on the website.